morning. Welcome to Central Christian Church and welcome to our Sunday worship. Wherever you are, wherever you find yourself in this moment, thank you for taking some time to worship God and to worship God with us here at Central. I hope you have had a good week, a good start to your 2022. Happy Martin Luther King Day weekend. I hope you all have an opportunity to pay some respects to Dr. King at some point throughout this weekend. Um, one item that I would invite you to do this week is to read the letters, uh, letter from a Birmingham jail. You can find it free online. It's a good practice. It's not very long and it's a, it's a good practice that I like to do um, every year is to reread that letter. Um, and there's a lot of good um, challenges and information and reminders in that letter that I think, especially in the moment that we're living in, I think it's an important time that we reread that letter, which is so important. So I invite you to do that this weekend. In the meantime, today we are going to be talking about Jesus's first miracle, turning the water into wine from John 2. So let's take some time now to turn our attention, turn our thoughts and our minds to worshiping God and centering ourselves in God's presence. Stronger, God, you are higher than any other. 
Our God is healer, awesome power, our God, our God. I invite us to turn our hearts and minds now to the prayers of the people. If you have any prayers that you'd like to have lifted up in this moment, I invite you to share those uh, prayer requests in the chat box of this video. You can also always uh, email me, call me, text me, let me know any prayer requests that you have. If you would like to have them lifted up in the community, please let me know that. Otherwise, I keep them private to myself. Um, so if you intend to have them shared at this time, then please let me know that in your email or your text or call. So let us turn now to prayer. Loving God, Creator God, God who is the sustainer of us all, we turn to you now in this moment, turning our, our, our minds and our eyes and our hearts towards the presence that is inescapably close to us. We're reminded that we can't escape your presence. We can only look away from it. So Lord, on this day, we pray that we will have the courage to turn that mind towards you. Lord God, on this Martin Luther King weekend, Lord, we pray that we can take the pieces of his life that he taught us, that he learned from you, that he learned through his relationship with you, and he embodied those values, and I pray that we can learn from him as well. Lord, for the love that he centered. Just like you, God, he, Dr. King, centered a love ethic that was radical, that accepted all, who welcomed all, who, who, in which directed all of his steps, all of his actions, that even in the face of the darkest evil, he centered a love that was nonviolent. Lord, we also remember Dr. King as one who took action, took action to do what was morally right, even when that morally right position was unpopular. Lord, give us the courage and the strength to live out and to fight for that which is morally right, that which is embodies every human being, which humanizes every person, which loves every person, which lifts up humanity. Lord, help us not to fall into what is easy and dehumanizing people, who is, which is reach, lashing out at people, which is doing things that don't honor the image of them, image that do not honor your image that is present in them. But Lord, most of all, allow us to take that step to do and to fight for that which is morally right in our lives, in our cities, in our towns, and wherever we are. Lord, we also remember how Dr. King pushed those around him and in fact was pushed by the community that, he, uh, so that surrounded him. Lord, Allow us to be pushed by the courage of Dr. King, the love of Dr. King, and of, in fact, of that whole movement, of those whose names don't, aren't always brought up, but who were so key and important in that time. Lord God, you send people into our lives, into this world, from whom we can learn. Dr. King was one. But most of all, Lord, we pray that we will model our lives after you and your Son, embodying the gospel, living out the gospel, living in constant presence with you. So God, we thank you for this time when we get to be together, even as we're apart. And I pray for this church, I pray for this community, and I thank you for all the good that is present here and how much better it will be when we take the steps to love, to do what is morally right, and to push each other. Amen. Hello, everybody. For our virtual worship this morning, we're going to be singing another Teze hymn called I Am Sure I Shall See. I'm going to sing it once as a leader, and then if the Spirit moves you at home, feel free to sing it along with me for three repetitions. Here we go. I'm sure. 
sure I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes, I shall see the goodness of our God. Hold firm, trust in the Our scripture reading for today comes out of the second chapter of John. We'll be reading the very beginning, verses 1 through 11. John 2, 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today I'd like to speak on the theme of sometimes we just need a push forward. Sometimes we just need a push forward. Lord, come into our presence. Speak to us in the deepest areas of our heart. Allow us to see a new path, a new way, a new journey. Most of us, most of all, Lord, Move us into greater communion with you. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts will be acceptable in your sight at all times, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's an old writer's joke that says, if you want to have a clean house, just sit down to write. It's a joke that actually is very true. I know in my own experience, if, if I sit down to write, often that writer's block kicks in and suddenly I remember all the items on my honeydew list. I remember all the places I've, I've wanted to clean. I can see all the dirty areas that, 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 that need to have some attention to. I can be extremely productive on things that aren't writing when I sit down to write. Perhaps you have something like that in your life. But it reminds me that oftentimes we can sit and we can do everything except that which we intend or are called to do. Sometimes we will have a great plan. Think of this New Year's and how we always make resolutions. We can have a great plan and we can do everything around that plan except the actual thing. 
Well, I think that's a very common experience, and I think it's something that we see lived out in this scripture. See, first of all, I love this story. And I love this story because it humanizes both Jesus and Mary. It seems like Jesus and Mary like to have fun. They're at a wedding in Galilee, and and the wine must have been flowing freely. If you think about it, all the wine that uh, that was planned to last throughout the entire wedding had already been gone. The bride and groom must not have planned correctly for how many people would be there or for how much fun they would be having because they run out of wine. I imagine that people are singing and they're dancing, they're laughing, and then just having good old-fashioned fun. See, sometimes we can take our spiritual lives so seriously. We can take our our, our religion so seriously. We can take reading the Bible so seriously that, that the humor and the fun and the joy is just taken out of it. Well, here, I like to imagine Jesus and Mary and the disciples who've been called so far just living it up, having fun, singing, laughing, dancing, just having a good time. But see, there's something else. See, they do run out of wine. The people have have drunk all of their wine. And And a conversation occurs between Mary and Jesus. Mary says, they have no more wine. Just out of the blue. And Jesus responds, my hour has not yet come. Don't push me. Don't, 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 don't be telling me to do anything that I need to do. And, and, and Mary, without responding, says, uh, You waiter, come and, 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 and we need to fix this wine situation. And my son, Jesus, Jesus will, will fix this wine situation. Just do whatever he tells you. I can just imagine Jesus responding to that, being covering his face and saying, Mom. It's a kind of a, a funny scene when you really uh, fill in some of the blanks that the gospel doesn't go into. But see, the thing is, is that, that Mary loves Jesus. Mary knows Jesus intimately, as most mothers do. And Mary also knows what Jesus has been called to do. Jesus, Mary knows the, the path that Jesus is going to be walking as the Son of God, as the one who's been called, and, and the one, as she explains before Jesus is even born, the image that she gets in the Magnificat of Jesus, bringing down the rich and the powerful and lifting up the lowly. Mary knows Jesus has a calling and a path forward. And she's watched him now for 30 years probably waiting for him to to begin his journey, but he's not lived out his calling yet. However, it seems like she sees him working on it. See, just before here in the Gospel of John, this is the very beginning of John, there's there's not a a birth narrative in the Gospel of John. And so uh, Mary sees Jesus starting to call his disciples, starting to gather the people that he needs around him, And he's also probably been thinking a lot about what his ministry is going to look like, how he's going to reveal his identity, how he's going to live out his calling in this world. But he's done none of that yet. He's done the peripheral stuff. He's done the the, the setting up of the pins and getting the perfect paper perfectly aligned and and ready to write. He's, He's done everything except what he's been called to do. And so Mary gives him a little push. She doesn't listen to him saying, my hour has not yet come. And Jesus seems to be, to be uh, not ready to do anything yet. But Mary knows that he probably needs this little push to get started. We all need a Mary in our lives. Someone who loves us, who knows us, who cares for us, and wants to see us become exactly who God has created us to be. To become who God is calling us to be. Jesus gets this push and performs his first miracle turning water into wine. And what happens from that miracle is that his disciples believe in who Jesus is. And we can probably infer that the servants as well, because they were the witnesses to this miracle. They knew where the wine had come from. All of us need a Mary in our lives to give us a push, to give us a loving nudge, 
something to push us forward in our life. Do you have a person like this in your life? Do you have someone who loves you, knows you, cares for you, and wants to see you live out who God has created you to be in its fullest extent, its fullest manifestation? I imagine several of you do. I know I have a person like that in my life. Bianca serves that role in my life. And it can be incredibly frustrating to, for somebody to, to know, that, know so much about you and to love you so deeply and to still push you in, into places that you don't necessarily want to go yet. It's nice to gather the perfect pen, to have the perfect paper, and to have everything organized extremely well before you get started. But sometimes that, all that peripheral stuff can be where we turn all of our inten- attention and we don't actually do what we've been called to do. Now, some of us, like I said, have a Mary in our lives, someone who's pushed us. But what about those of us who don't? What about those of us who might not know or realize that there's someone in our lives who, who, who serve in that role, who can do that for us and to us? How do you find a person like this? And the first thing I want to say is you have to pray for it. You need to pray for it. We can't do anything, I don't think, without requesting something from God, just connecting with God about what we want in our lives. I I believe that God answers the prayers that are necessary for us to have. And if anything, it allows us to turn our mind, our attention, and our spirits to finding what it is that we need. In this case, someone to push us forward in our lives. But beyond prayer, I think the most important thing is that, that we can do in order to find someone like this in our lives is to invest deeply in relationship. See, Mary and Jesus had a, 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 a deep relationship, a loving relationship, as mother, son, uh, with the, with the, the, the way that, that, that Jesus was born, I can only imagine the bond that they shared with each other. They had a deeply formed relationship, and, and they invested deeply in their relationship. And so we need to find someone or a couple people that we want to invest in a deep relationship with. Now, what does that mean? That means we need to find someone that we can be honest with about who we are, about what we want, about our desire for life, about our desire for uh, for things in general. Someone that we can be deeply honest with and not worry about being judged or, or thrown out or cast aside. Someone that we have a relationship with where we're not looking for something from each other where it's not a, it's not a relationship where um, we invest in this so that we can get something else. A deeply formed relationship is one where we seek the betterment, the uplift of each other. And sometimes we give, sometimes we take, but there's that bond and there's that commitment that we have to, to investing in this relationship and being going through with this relationship. It means deep listening. It means being able to listen beyond what just is being said by the other person. And it also takes courage and it takes heart because it's not easy to make yourself vulnerable. It's not easy to commit to this type of relationship. But a relationship is required in order to have someone like Mary in your life pushing you to become who God is calling you to be. It requires a deeply formed relationship. I pray that you will find this person in your life because we all need a Mary in our life. It was at the wedding in Cana where Jesus performed his first miracle, turning water into wine and where his disciples first believed. But it wouldn't have happened without Mary making that push. I pray you find your Mary. Amen. All my life I've longed to be a hero With a sword raised high 
I was gonna take giants down Be a man you could write about Deep in my chest is the heart of a warrior So why am I still standing here? Why am I still holding back from you? I hear you call me out into deep waters Settle on the shallow end So why am I still standing here? I'm so afraid what it would cause to fall apart I'd walk by faith if I could get these feet to move But I don't want to live that way I don't want to look back on a life that never stepped across the line. So why am I still standing here? Why am I still holding back from you? You've given me a faith that can move the mountains, but I'm still playing in the sand. Building I'm so tired of standing here What if I gave everything to you? What if I gave everything? What if I stopped holding back from you? Starting now I'm stepping out into holding back from you starting now I'm stepping out in deeper waters I want to see some mountains move ready to give everything say goodbye to stay We come now to the table, this table that was set for us by Christ himself, this table which welcomes us to be in communion with God, with the Spirit, and with Jesus, to be in communion with the Trinity here at this table with each other. It is through the bread that we're all united as one body through Christ, and it's through this cup that we are reminded that all are welcome. There are no barriers to being at one with God, to being at one with Christ, and there are no barriers at this table. If you feel led to commune with us today, know that you are welcome here. I invite you to join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, come down upon us and be with us as we join in communion with you. Lord, I pray that we feel each other's presence, all those who are participating in this communion today. I pray that we feel the presence of the Spirit, feel the presence of Christ, and know we're all laying in the loving embrace of God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray that we will take this communion and we will live it out. In your name we pray. Amen. It was on the night when Jesus was betrayed and arrested that he gathered with his disciples in the upper room for a final meal. It was at this meal when Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. For every time you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He lifted it and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. For every time you drink it, 
you do so in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. I invite you to take the bread and to take the cup that you've gathered. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer as we close out this time of communion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, Central, I hope you have a great rest of your day, rest of your weekend. I pray that you all are staying safe and staying well. Um, if you do take me up on my challenge to read the letters from, letters, letter from a Birmingham jail, I invite you to reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation about it. In the meantime, know that there are people in your life that love you, that care for you, and that want to see you live fully into who God has created you to be. It's important that you invest in those relationships so that they can push you, and even you can push them. We all need a holy push to help us become who God is calling us to be. We all need a Mary in our life. I hope you have it, and I hope you can find it. Central, I pray that you go in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.